you know, kind of set up here. I always end up messing up when I don't turn it off, though, so I'm good now. I just have to do it some way. All right. We are in our new book today, which is awesome because we're back in Genesis. Uh, December 6, 2020. It's the first lesson out of it. God calls Abraham. The text is from Genesis 12 through 15. The focus is Genesis 12, 1 through 8, 13, 14 through 18, and 15, verse 6. Key verse is, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted in him, he counted it to him for righteousness. That's Genesis 15, verse 6. The application is the student will recognize many untold blessings when he follows the Lord. A first look. Chapters 1 through 11 of Genesis deals with physical creation. Chapters 12 through 50 are about Abram and his descendants. For the most part, we regard the subject of Genesis as the creation of the world. That is not wrong, but the majority of this book is centered on the creation of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel began with one man hearing and heeding the promise of God. Real faith is not based on feeling or emotion. Even though we are emotional creatures, Real faith is accepting the promise of God. When our faith is real, we believe God, and then we act on what we believe. Instead of making promises to God, Abram accepted God's promises to him. Looking back at the situation of Abram, we can see how incredible and wonderful the promises of God were. Like all believers, Abram embarked on a great adventure when he trusted in God. He could not have imagined the wonderful things God had in store for him and his family. Like all believers, Abram also went through a process of spiritual growth that eventually brought him to spiritual matur maturity. As he lived and as we he learned, he changed. Often the lessons were painful, but God was with Abram and his family, and God honored every promise he ever made to Abram. Christianity is here today in large part because of the faith of this great man of old. A closer look. God's promise of blessings. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In Acts 7, we find a com commentary and insight into these verses. In Genesis, we learn that Abram was living in Ur of Chaldea. Is that how you say that? Chaldea, yeah. Chaldea. When God appeared to him and called him out of, this, of that country, Abram at first traveled north into Haran. After his father... Terah died, he moved on into what we now know as Israel. It is important to know at least two things about this journey. First, Abram did not have a map. He did not know where he was going. The promise of God was specific, but the directions was in, indefinite. God asked Abram to follow him to a place that would later be revealed to him. Abram was not given a step-by-step -step itinerary and told about the various dangers and rewards that lay along the way. His journey was entirely by faith. He believed God, and he believed that God was leading him into a place of blessing. We need this kind of faith today. Real faith trusts God completely. We need faith in God when we know exactly where we are going, and we especially need faith when we are walking in the dark. Abram did not come from a family of believers. In Joshua 24, verse 2, we learn that Tara, Abram's father, was an idol worshiper. I'm going to go ahead and read that real quick, but I wanted to add in verse 3 also. Joshua 24, verses 2 and 3. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord of God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Tara, the father of Abraham, and the father of and, Achor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abram from the other side of the flood and led him throughout 
all the land of Canaan and multiplied and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. Abram found faith in God in spite of his circumstances. God was present in the idolatrous land of Ur, and Abram believed God and acted on his belief. Abram was 75 years old when he trusted God and left Haran, and he followed the Lord from the, for the next 100 years of his life. While most people might not think of beginning a new adventure at that age, age Abram trusted that God knew best, and he followed where God led him. Age and circumstance should never be viewed as barriers to faith in the promise of God. The intentional promise God made to Abram was awesome. God promised to make a great nation of Abram's descendants. God, God furthers, further, further promised to bless Abram, make his name great, and that Abram would in turn be a blessing to others. All families of the earth would be blessed by Abram. Looking back with the vision of historical certainty, we can see how every one of these promises have come to pass. However, we must remember that God made the covenant with a 75-year-old man who had no children and was surrounded by idol worshipers. The life of Abram is an example of the truth of Ephesians 2 verse 10. God has a plan for every human being. We have no idea of the wonderful things that God can accomplish when we trust his word and act on his promise. Abram and Sarah were not sinless. In their journey, they often failed at the, at the promises of God. They learned as they traveled and incorporated each new lesson into, their, into the lexicon of faith that eventually, eventually defined their lives. I had no clue what that word meant, lexicon. So I am looking it up. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know, just because I had no clue, and I don't know if y'all do. It means the vocabulary of a person, language, or branch of knowledge. So I didn't know that. I learned something new. When we follow the Lord, we will face many tests, and we will fail some of them. But for a child of God, failure is never forever, and our trials will make us stronger if we continue to trust and follow the Lord. I'm going to stop there for a minute. Does anyone have anything to add? We just need to learn to follow. Even though we don't, we may, not, we may not know the end result. I like what I said there, Abraham didn't have a map. <laughs> he didn't know where he was going. Sometimes we want, we just want to know where we're going before we take off. But Abraham just, you know, he, he did what God told him to do, even though he didn't know exactly what was, where he was going. Mm -hmm. God asks us to do things and we want to know the end before we start. Amen. Didn't know. Right. Anyone else? Alrighty, we'll go ahead and continue with part two. Abram's obedience. Genesis 12, 4 through 8. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, Unto the plain of Morah. How do you say that right? Is there not? Huh? Morah or? Okay. I wasn't quite sure on that, so I wanted to ask. Yeah, I would say Morah. Morah? I wasn't sure on that, and I listened to it there on my phone trying to figure out how to say it, and I, it gave me multiple different ways. <laughs> and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hiah on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Now he learned 
Now we learn some of the practical details of the journey of Abram. Note that his birth name was Abram, not Abraham. Abram means high father. Abram, Abraham means father of a multitude. Significantly, God would later make this name change. It is ironic that a man who had no children would be named High Father. We learn that Abram did not travel alone. He left Ur and traveled up the Tigris-Euphrates Valley north and west to a place named Haran. Later in Genesis, we learn that Haran was an important geolog geological location in the lives of Isaac and Jacob. Abram had a brother named Haran who died in Ur. He also had another brother named Nahor. Terah's Tara, Abraham's father, Abram's father, accompanied him to Haran. Abram left there only after his father died. Abram was married to a beautiful woman named Sarah. He also, he also assumed responsibility for his nephew Lot, the son of Haran. Evidently, while Abram lived in Haran, he prospered and his wealth increased. He may have been tempted to stay there, and Abram certainly honored his responsibility to his father by staying there until Terah died. However, Haran was not his final destination, and so God led Abram even farther west and then south into Canaan. The leadership of God is not a once-in-a-lifetime situation. The leadership of God is continual. Abram never settled down permanently in any part of this land. In Hebrew 11, 9, and 10, we learn that he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. He lived in tents on, the, on earth, anticipating a reward in heaven. This teaches us the great lesson that we, ha that we should hold all physical things loosely. We can enjoy what we have here, but our true home should be in heaven, and we should look for our ultimate reward only when we get there. You can have a nice big house, but here, but eventually it's either going to get termites in the floor right away or something. I mean, we're experiencing that now at the church, but I mean, you know, things of this world just, they, they end up going away. Things in heaven are eternal. We need to look for those. Abram came into the land of Canaan, which was named for the people who lived there, the Canaanites. He first came to she Shechem mm -hmm. on the plain of Morah. This place is located about 35 miles north of Jerusalem between Mount Gerizim mm -hmm. and Mount Ebal. This place was later called Samaria. Importantly, Abram built an altar and called on the name of the Lord. Worship is a vital part of our relationship with God. God appeared to Abram at Shechem and confirmed that this was the land that would be given to Abram and his descendants. Genesis 12, 7 contains the title deed to the land of Canaan, and it is clearly given to, to the seed or descendants of Abram. A severe famine broke out soon after Abraham, Abram arrived in the land. Abram fled to Egypt rather than stay in the land and depend on God for his food supply. This was his first failure to believe the promises of God. God did not lead him to Canaan so that he could run away from trouble. Abram found even more trouble in Egypt and was expelled from Egypt by Pharaoh after he deceived Pharaoh about the marital status of his beautiful wife, Sarah. Abram returned to the hill country of the Negev Desert near what is now Hebron, south of Jerusalem. I'll pause again if anyone has any commentary to go along with it. Uh, I think just pointing out, rather than stay where God said him, he, he, he fled to Egypt. You know, sometimes even even Abraham's faith, for whatever reason, faltered there. He felt like he needed to. I'm sure he thought he was going to a place that would be you know, better for his family, but. He still was not without one. He probably had quite a few people in his group that he was concerned about too. Right. Now, as I read that there, I stumbled a little bit, which made me sound or made me think that when I said it, it sounded like something different. I'm going to go ahead and specify on that. When it says that 
this was his first failure to believe the promise of God, promises of God. I stumbled over that. I'm just going to class, uh, clarify that. It's not his failure that he believed God. It's that he didn't believe God and stick to God. I just want to clarify that because to me, that's what it sounded like. I don't want someone thinking the same thing as what I thought when I read it. That is not what happened. He didn't believe God, so he left where God had put him. I just don't want someone thinking that that's what we believe. That's, that's not what the Bible says. I, th I think what Joe's saying, is too, is you know sometimes we let our our thoughts overrule what God wants. He was, I'm sure, like like I said, he had many people. Yeah, famine would have been a real big problem with a large group of people. Right. Yeah. So he, he, in his own mind, he was doing what he felt like needed to be done. And we can we can second guess all we want to. I mean, we'd be, probably do the same thing. But uh, you know, he, he, in the end, he still was going away from where God had put him. Yeah, and that can be a hard thing about believing in God and trusting in him. You know, we got to trust in him always. You know, we want to look at situations when it starts getting to be in that hard time of our life. Instead of trusting in what we think is best, we need to trust in what he knows is best. So, like Joe said, I mean, he probably was thinking that he was doing the right thing, but he needed to just trust in God. God wasn't going to let something happen to him. All right. Anything else before I continue? All righty. Part three, a new home forever. Genesis 13, verses 14 through 18, and verse 15 or chapter 15, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to th thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. When Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt, and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, mm -hmm. which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness." Like you look every time, every time Abraham built an altar, he was worshiping the Lord. And you know, there's lots, lots of times that he built an altar. And uh, I don't know. That's, I think that's an example we can uh, take. You know, he, he built an altar to worship. And we don't necessarily have to build an altar, but I think many times we need to stop and worship uh, and thank God for what He's done for us. It seems like every time he got to a new place, he built one. He was constantly doing something for the Lord. It seems he was constantly building that altar. So, you know, we don't have to build it, but we can go to him in prayer, and we need to do that constantly. When Abram, okay, yeah, I want to make sure I was in the right place. When Abram returned from Egypt, he was a very wealthy man. Abram's wealth was the source of arguments between the herdsmen of Abram and the herdsmen of Lot. Abram graciously allowed Lot to choose which part of the land that he would take, and Abram took, then took the other part. Lot chose the well-watered plains leading to Sodom, and Abram settled near Mamre, which would later be called Hebron. Once again God appeared to Abram and gave him assurance that all this land would belong to his descendants forever. God promised to make the descendants of Abram as plentiful as the dust of the earth, indicating a great number that could not be counted. We must remember that all this time, Abram and Sarah had no children, so this must have seemed like a fantastic promise. They were getting older every year, and yet they were childless. In spite of this, in spite of their situation, the promise of, of God were secure, and they would surely come to pass. In the course of events, Abram would use his power and influence to rescue Lot from the Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian people who had carried away the people of Sodom. 
It is in reference to this incident that Abram was first called a Hebrew, Genesis 14, 13. The word Hebrew means from the other side or wonder. Abram raised an army of 318 men and overtook the Macedonian king in Upper Galilee and defeated them. On his return from this victory, he met Melchizedek. How do you say that? Melchizedek. 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 Okay. I had no clue how to say that. I'm sorry. The priest of <clears throat> Salem and offered Melchizedek a tithe of the things he had gained in the battle. We talked about this, I think it was last week. Or was it a Wednesday, was it Wednesday night? Maybe it was a Wednesday night. Well, Melchizedek was a, a lot of people say he was a type of Christ, but I think you can look at it and say he was a pre incarnate appearance of Christ. But if you would look at his description and who he was, but you know, Abraham worshipped him and he gave him the tithe. Yeah, okay. Okay. After this, we read the wonderful. Summation. Summation of these experiences. What does that word mean? Conclusion, the summary. summary. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I missed that one, but I did. Abram believed God, and his belief was counted to him for righteousness. It is important to note that it was not his behavior or activity that made Abram righteous. It was his faith in God. A Abram was saved by faith, and as he allowed his faith to find experience, expression in his life his works reflected the faith that was intentionally in his heart anything to add before we go on to a final word alrighty final word when Abram came into the land he built an altar and offered a sacrifice to God when he returned from Egypt he built an altar and offered a sacrifice to God when he had met Melchizedek, he made an offering to the priest of God the significant thing in Abram's life was he his relationship to God. That relationship began in simple faith. God did not give Abram reasons or explanations. He gave him promises. Abram did not respond with questions or rationalization. He responded in faith. The obedience of Abram teaches us that true belief will result in actions. The only way we can demonstrate that we believe in God is through the things that we do. It would have been a hollow claim for Abram to say that he was called and that he believed God and yet remain in Ur. It would have been equally hollow for him to remain in Haran when God was leading him into Canaan. Likewise, it is required it required faith in the promises of God to accept the fact that a hostile land occupied by idol worshippers actually belong to this wandering herdsman. The fact is that God gave this land to Abram and his descendants. It took faith to believe that a childless couple would have a family that would have that was a numberless as the dust dust of the ground, yet they yet that was the promise of God and Abram believed it. The promises God had has made in the New Testament may seem equally improbable to us but when we doubt, we should remember one word, Israel. The existence of this of that nation is living proof that God will honor his promises. Anything to add? How old was Abraham when he left for Canaan? When he left for Canaan, he said he was 75. What other people were involved in Abraham's, Abram's decision? Yeah. Who was involved in his decision, though? Oh. I take that nobody would do from him and God. I mean, I know a lot were with him, but the decision to leave was Abram. Mm -hmm. First left to go to Canaan. Yeah. Well, when he when he, I think when he left out of uh, his original his original homeland. Well, you could say with that with all dad, of them. I mean, was his dad play a part in? Brother, his brother's death, wasn't it? Yeah, but he—that's when he went to Haven, right? Yeah. But I think 
I think what it was getting at to me was asking what, what other people were involved in Abram's decision. I think it was between him and God. Yeah, I mean, he, was, it was he decided to follow God. He believed God. He even specifies when his dad went with him to Haran that his dad accompanied him. It didn't say that his dad led him or anything. It was just he accompanied him. It was like saying, hey, I'm going to go to Charleston. Y'all want to go with me? <laughs> I mean, he made that choice with God. His dad just that's, happened that's, to go that's too. That's the way I take it. But how did God demonstrate Abram the dimensions of the promised land? As far as you could see? Yeah, look to the east, look to the west, look to the north, look to the south. It's yours. How was Abram made righteous before God? Believe me. How are we made righteous before God? We believe, believe him. him. Believe him. Trust him. <clears throat> well, we'll go ahead and dismiss then, and we'll meet back here in just about two, three minutes. Is there a second?